Okay, so I promise that it is not my goal to do three parts for every lesson, but we needed it today, so we're gonna just accept it. So we're gonna do two more examples and then I'll be out of your hair and you will have the opportunity to get started on your work. So here in example seven, you're gonna see that sometimes functions are, we are asked to, sub, to uh, evaluate functions for things other than a letter, like h of a, if h, h of x is equal to blah, 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 blah. So remember my trick I talked about in the last video. I said, hey, make sure you, or sometimes I like to, I said, write um, blanks for all of the x values. And that helps me see exactly what's being asked of me. So I literally am doing that now. I'm writing um, h of x equaling all of this to be h of blank is equaling to three times blank to the seventh power, et cetera, et cetera. And finally, this last line, this last uh, term rather, should be minus 11. So notice I just have blanks where the x's are. So then when I'm asked about something like h of a, I put the a in for all the blanks. And literally, that's all you have to do. I know it seems silly but that's what you're asked to do and so you can do that. So h of a is equal to three times a to the seventh power minus 10 a to the fourth power plus three a minus 11 and literally we're done. I don't have to write any more here and I could take the parentheses off if I wanted to but that's not a problem. I'm going to leave it here. This is the answer. Let's look at this next one. Same thing and I like this expression is going to be present a bit more of a problem than the a did. Basically we were replacing of one variable for another, but let's go ahead and try this out. So again, j of blank is equal to blank squared minus seven times blank plus four. And in the blanks, I'm gonna put what they ask me to put, which is c minus five. So let me put that in a different color, c minus five, all the way through. And here, I don't have the luxury to walk away and say, I'm done. What I actually am expected to do is to uh, simplify this expression in a sense or multiply out join like terms we are done right but but let's go ahead and take it to the next step is what I'm asking so c minus 5 quantity squared is calculated in this way you recognize that this is c minus 5 times c minus 5 and if you remember dealing with foiling or multiplying binomials you know that this would be c squared minus uh, 10c plus 25 that's what happens when I foil this out or multiply these two terms. And if you're having trouble with that, see me, see somebody, make sure we can get some help so that this is not a mystery to you. So this term is being replaced by c squared times 10c, I mean minus 10c rather, plus 25. And then here I'm going to distribute my negative seven throughout the entire expression. Remember this is a negative seven, not just a minus seven. Take it as a negative seven and life will be good. So negative seven times C is gonna be a negative seven C. A negative seven times a negative five is gonna be a positive 35. And then we have the plus four. And now we're gonna just join like terms together. Here are my constants. Those guys are gonna to go together. Here are my um, C terms. Those guys are gonna to go together. And this c squared term is all alone. So when I'm done, I'm left with the realization that j of c minus 5 is equal to c squared uh, minus 17c plus 64. All right, let's go on to the next and final example. So in example 8, we're going to state the domain of each function. Now remember, we could state the domain of a function when we saw it as ordered pairs, or we saw it as a table, or even we saw it as a graph. But here, this is a little bit harder. Let me explain to you the things you need to worry about when you're dealing with an equation. You need to worry about these two things, which are a 0 in the denominator and taking the square root of a negative number. Those are the only two things you need to worry about. And so what you're going to do is when you're asked about the domain, you're really of, a, of any kind of an equation, you really want to check that there's no number that you can inadvertently put in here that is going to make this whole thing an unreal number. And so we know dividing by zero is not a real number. That's not a thing. It's not real. And we also know that taking the square root of a negative number 
is not going to be real either because we're going to be in the imaginaries. And if these this concept is weird to you, let's talk. Find some time to talk to me. Find some time to talk to somebody else. Make sure it's making sense to you. So check this out. When I have a situation like this, I'm not even worried about the numerator. There's no radical up there. I'm all good. Nothing. There's going to be no problem with that numerator, no matter what x value. But this denominator is what I got to take a look at. So I, I literally say, okay, denominator, is there anything here that could make you equal zero? If I can get an answer for this, then those are things that I need to stay away from for this particular um, equation or for this particular function. So I moved my two concerns over there and now I'm gonna focus on the one concern. Since there's no radical here, I don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna solve this equation. Now, if you forgot this, this is something we can also talk about, but what we're gonna solve, this is a quadratic equation as x squared is in the mix. So now we're going to, we know that we can solve it by using quadratic formula. I don't think so, we don't need to bring that up right now. What we're going to do is um, factor. That's the easiest way to solve this and I can see it's easily factorable. Factor out an x, I get x minus four. That's this part is now equal to zero. And what I'm gonna do is set each factor equal to zero because we know the principle. When two numbers multiply and give me zero as a product, I know one of those numbers has to be zero. So either, let's highlight this, either x is zero or x minus four is zero. Those are two numbers that I'm multiplying. So if x is zero, if I consider that situation, I'll put that here. If x is equal to zero, then that's one solution. X is zero. So we got that. We know that x equals zero will make the denominator zero. And the other thing I need to consider is if x minus four is equal to zero, and that's going to be highlighted in red. If that's the case, then we know that this would imply that x was equal to positive four. You guys see that, right? So these are the two things that we need to concern ourselves with. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, these are two things that are not gonna be in our, our domain. So our domain is going to be all x values except zero and four, and here's how we write that. So I could write that the domain is the set of all x such that x does not equal to zero and x does not equal to four, totally legit. Or I can write it with that parenthetical notation we talked about. Okay, this does not look pretty, but it is accurate. So what we're looking at is all the numbers from negative infinity to zero are cool, but notice I have a soft bracket. I'm not including zero here or a parentheses as opposed to a bracket. I don't have this symbol here. That would include zero, which we don't want to do. So I've got a parentheses in union. That's what this U looks means in union with uh, all the numbers from zero to four, not including zero and not including four, every number in between and union with the set of all numbers from four to positive infinity. And so I know this looks cumbersome, but I want you to understand it because as you guys move on to calculus, you will see this more and more. So both of these are acceptable. Let's look at part B. We're almost done, guys. So part B, we see we've got two things going on. We've got the possibility of a zero in the denominator and we have a square root we, we could possibly take the, the square root of a negative number. So I've got a couple things to consider. What I don't want basically is for this part under here, let me use my highlighter again, let's use purple this time. I don't want for x minus four to be either zero, cause then I'd be take square root of zero is still zero or um, a negative number. So how would I write that? How can I express that mathematically? Hopefully you guys remember that that would simply be an inequality. X minus four must be greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, it's not equal to zero and it's not a negative number. Are you guys with me? So I'm gonna solve this inequality in order to get my domain. So solving the inequality is pretty simple. Move the four over to the other side. X must be greater than four. That is the answer. X must be greater than four in order for this to hold. And this is my domain, okay? This is what I want to have. Notice I didn't do exactly what I did here. Here I said, hey, let me make it do what I don't want it to do so I can figure out what to exclude. Here I said, hey, let me make it what I need it to be. I, let me make it what I need it to be. I need X minus four greater than zero. And simply put, my domain, my, my, my domain, excuse me, is all values of X that are greater than four. So I could write uh, the set of X such that X is greater than four, the set of all real numbers such that X is greater than four. Or I could write it parenthetically, which would look like this. All numbers from, um, not a curly bracket, my bad, all numbers from four, not including four, 
but from four all the way up to positive infinity. And there it is. And that's it. We've reached the end. You guys are ready and to take a break a little bit, breathe. And then I want you to get started with your assignment. All right, take it easy. Thank you. Let me know if you have any questions. I look forward to answering them. Bye-bye.